Hello everyone, Anthony here. This is just a short video to share a tool for overcoming ancient shame triggers. We all, well, many of us often have memories that come up from the past that we feel ashamed about and they somehow possess us and we get a stab of pain or uh, shamefulness, however you experience that embarrassment, um, guilt, and they seem to be completely involuntary. They just come out of nowhere. There might be no external event that triggered them, but just suddenly, wow, bam, there's shame. And I just want to share a technique for wiping the emotional memory for, from your system of these um, ancient triggers, because they can cause us a lot of suffering and shame is one of the one of the programs that's the hardest to remove for the from the system and the reason for that is shame is basically something that you learn from the outside which is to keep you in line to keep you from not um making a mistake that you perceive as life threatening because um through our evolution obviously in hunter gatherer societies if you fell out of favor with the tribe, you, your very life would be at risk because if you, you get alienated, the two most fundamental needs of the, the most animal part of us are survival and reproduction. And you're not going to survive or reproduce if you're exiled from the tribe. So our evolution has led us to have very strong defenses against doing the wrong thing socially. And the annoying thing about these triggers is you might think, wow, this happened like 15, 20 years ago when I was at school. Like, uh, I don't care. Like logically you think, why would I still be embarrassed about that? Why would I be ashamed about that? But you cannot necessarily um, just remove that with logic. So you can't reason yourself out of these triggers. And the two strategies that people usually try to implement is thinking about the situation excessively, like for ages and ages, just mulling over it again and again, and that gets you nowhere. And the other one is slightly more evolved, which is to change the subject and try not to think about it at all. But that doesn't do much good either because it seems to come up again and again. And then you might get to a third stage where what you naturally do is you say, right, let me go back to the thought that created that trigger and see what that feeling is. And let me see if I can stay with the feeling. And you stay with the feeling for a while and then your mind wanders off and you go to something else. And what do you know? You know, a couple of days later, the same situation comes up in your head and the, the trigger is still there. So here's a technique that you can use to try, you'll need to practice this yourself to see if it works, because I could be making it all up. You, you'll need to get first-hand experience of trying this technique, and it probably will take you between five minutes and 20 minutes per trigger. So you will need to do this with a bunch of memories, but the good thing is that the emotional memory is, or similar emotional memories are stored in the body together. So if you, start removing a few of these shame triggers, then you're actually removing many of them and you will get better at doing this technique as well. So let me just think if there's any more theory that I need to mention before I go on. I'm sure there's one thing, but if it's important, I'll come back to it. So what you want to do is get some time to yourself and bring up the memory of the event that you have a shame trigger associated with and see if you can start to experience that feeling and locate it in your body. Where do you feel it in your body? Is it in your chest? Is it in your stomach, your solar plexus? Is it in your throat? Is it around your head? And really, really focus on that feeling and accept it. And then what you want to try and do, and this this can sometimes be hard or even cringy at some times, is you should start to think about aspects of that situation that you could actually be proud of yourself for. I'm just going to illustrate with one of them 
that I remember, I used to some sometimes remember, and it seems a little bit ridiculous, uh, as, as many of them do when I think of it, because having an example really, really helps to illustrate the point. So what I did, what, what happened was, when I was about 15, I used to hang out with all the other rockers outside the Gallery of Modern Art in Glasgow. That's where we all used to hang out, all the goths and punks and moshers and rockers. And I met a girl that was quite a bit older than me, and she really liked me. So she said she'd have to introduce me to her sister because she thought that would be suitable for her sister. And she, I gave her my number and she phoned me up and she set up a date for us. And I went out with this girl and I was walking around town. We had a great time. And several times, like, I turned to her and held her hands and she was, like, ready to kiss me. But I was so overcome with anxiety that I just couldn't make a move. And at the end of the day, like, I put her on the train well, I went to take her to put her on the underground train. And just as the train came, she like jumped on me and kissed me and um, went off. But I never heard from her again. She probably went out with some alpha male <laughs> instead that knew how to make a move. And this made me really ashamed And at the time. And I realized back then, well, I'll come, I'll come back to that. So what I did when I was removing the shame from this trigger, is I first brought up the memory and went through the day and I started to feel the sense of shame in my body. And then after a while, I started thinking of some things. Well, look, man, you're pretty, you were pretty ex inexperienced, right? Let's look at what actually happened. A girl that was a lot older than you met you and thought you were so cool or so interesting or so nice that she actually set up a date with her own sister with you. And not only that, but the girl wanted to kiss you. And your own, and it was only your lack of experience that, you know, stopped you. That's pretty good. That's pretty go good going. In fact, she wanted to kiss you so much that she threw herself at you at the end. So given your level of experience and given your anxiety, that's not bad. That's pretty good. So sometimes this can be really hard with certain memories because you think, what could I think of that would possibly be proud of this? I mean, um, there was a guy, a, a client I had was speaking about um, a situation where he went into school stoned and brought his guitar and played it in front of the the class. And he started jamming out this like death metal or something like that. And he looked up. And everyone was just looking at him like, what the fuck? And he was really into it. And he suddenly had this overwhelming shame because the class uh, thought it was uncool uh, or thought it was weird. And it's like, well, dude, I mean, you, there's something to be proud of there. I mean, you got in front of the class, you jammed out, like you took the risk, you took the risk. So whatever the situation is, there must be things that even if you have to force yourself, to, there must be things that you can think of and sometimes it takes a while sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to think of anything that you're proud of about the situation but what you do is you start thinking of those things and exaggerating the feeling of pride in your body and you hold the feeling of shame you observe the feeling of shame in your body and you observe the feeling of pride at the same time and you just continue to amp up the feeling of pride and you amp it up and amp it up. And over the course of five to 20 minutes, you may notice that the pride, like, you know, like a equation, like what's four plus minus four? Zero. So it's like your, sh your shame's at five and you add some pride and that takes minus one and then you amp it up and it's minus two and then it's minus three and minus four, and eventually you neutralize the charge of the shame. And that, if you do this properly, if you succeed in doing this, you should remove the emotional memory from the body. So, um, the, the, Damn, I had something to say there. So, 
when these triggers, it's important to understand, and almost no one understands this, that when an emotion comes up from the past, that is like emotional detoxification. That's actually trying to leave, right? Um, it's particularly if there's not, particularly if there's no external trigger, if you're just remembering something or, you know, you remember from something from the past and sadness comes up or, or anything like that, that is actually that program trying to leave. The mind, the psyche is always trying to, the psyche is always trying to heal itself, but it can actually heal itself unless it feels safe to do so because there's other parts of the psyche that feels like you have to hold on to this emotion to keep safe. And the only way for these emotions to actually leave is to let them be in a way, to, to, to allow them to be. So when you're emotions come up from the past, it takes a certain discipline and learning and experience. The more you experience it, the more you're able to accomplish it of just allowing the emotion to arise and be what it is. Even better to cast a loving eye upon it, to allow it, to, to, to care for it, to care for it as though it were someone else you cared about. And if you maintain the discipline or build the discipline gradually of being very allowing and holding space for these waves to come out, then a lot, a lot can leave you. But a lot of people do need um, co-regulation, which is, you know, some, you, you guys probably know because you're very knowledgeable in this group. The, a lot of people do need someone there to witness, to, to hold the space for them. And the only reason for that is you don't feel safe. So, you know, when you're a baby, you learn to regulate your emotional apparatus by the regulation of your caregiver. So when you're crying when you're a baby, mum picks you up and holds you and she calms down. And by the same, by her calming down, your body calms down, you co-regulate. So the the problem is a lot of us did not get that. You know, the, the, the psychologist Donald Winnicott talked about the good enough mother and the obvious implication there being having a good enough mother is about the best we could hope for in this life because no parent is perfect. And if, if your mum is there uh, or your dad is deregulated, if they're quick to temper, if they're dismissive, if they're impatient with your emotions, then you might not learn to regulate. So therefore, as adults, we need to learn these for ourselves. And so that's why... I recommend you get some time to yourself and practice this, this idea of bleaching out the feeling of shame by drumming up a period.